Ah, this is Brooklyn, St. Michael with the School of Aquaponics, and this is Ask the Aquaponics Guy. Preventing you from becoming a biscuit headache grower. Today, high class growers, we're gonna get into it. We're gonna talk a little bit about reverse osmosis filters, when it's necessary, and who it may be necessary for. But before we jump into that, I want to thank you guys out there for liking the video and subscribing to the channel. I appreciate every single one of you guys out there from Aquaponics Paradise. Now let's jump right into it right now. This question here comes from Arslan Warwak. Arslan Warwak or Warwatch. I'm sorry if I pronounced your name wrong. Warwak. I'm going to go with that. What's going on, my man? Um, and the question goes as follows. It says, do I need an RO filter for my well water before I add that water to my aquaponic system? When is an RO required and when isn't it? Now, this is a great question, Arslan, and that's what we're going to touch on right now. We're going to have to touch on a little bit of the nooks and crannies of aquaponics to kind of get this point across. It's going to have some specifics to it, so I want you guys to follow along and bear with me. Now, a RO filter or a reverse osmosis filter, this is typically going to be used in the hydroponics field. They like to strip out all of the nutrients from the source water. If it's a source water that's high, has, is, is, has a lot of um, nutrients in it, maybe it's hard, has very hard water, they want to remove a lot of those nutrients in there so they can have pretty much a clean, slated, um, source of water where they can then add their formula, their stock solutions and, uh, and whatnot to that and mix it together without having to have anything extra in there that might interrupt what they're trying to add to the plant. Now that's usually what they do for hydroponics, but there are some instances for aquaponics where a RO filter may be necessary. Now, one of the scenarios where a uh, reverse osmosis filter may be necessary is going to depend on what you have in your source water, right? So it's important that you do a test on your source water in the well to know what is in there. So if you have certain minerals in there, like manganese in excess, um, aluminum in excess, and this is going to depend on your groundwater, the pH of that water, that's what's going to determine what type of minerals that are in that source water um, that you need to look for. Now, the manganese and the aluminum, those can be present in there as certain concentrations that when you add them to your system, they can become toxic to the plants, right? The plants can only take those up. They only need those elements in a small quantity, right? So if you, it's, it's not hard to give, uh, provide a toxicity of those elements to the plant. So you have to keep that in mind. Now, if that's the issue and that's the case, if you have high amounts of, and it could be other elements in there either. Uh, also, you have to just check, right? You have to run a proper analysis on your water. You can have copper in there, depending on the, the pipes that are used. You know, you can have some, um, they could be corroded and copper could be leached in there. Copper is another thing that plants um, uh, take up and could be, uh, could be relatively toxic to the plants at small amounts. Right. So that's another thing that you have to keep in mind. Right. So you really have to, to look at that and find out what it is that's in your source water. And if you do have something in there that's in excess, then you may want to consider putting uh, an RO filter on your well and filtering out that water before it enters into your aquaponic system. And that's going to get rid of pretty much all the, the ions that are in there. Um, that contribute um, to the, the minerals that are in that source water. So you pretty much have pure water at the end of that. But it may be necessary if you have an excess of any of those, uh, those minerals. So that's something that you have to think about. Now, a more, probably a more practical scenario for the majority of the, although that may be something that you guys experience, but it may not be for the most part for mo most of you guys out there that have well water. Right? You might not have an excess amount of any of those nutrients in there. But something that is probably more practical for a lot of people who have uh, well water and you're getting into aquaponics 
is it's pretty specific. So I want you to pay attention, right? And that's gonna be if you want to run a raft system, your well water is high in alkalinity and you wanna stock your raft system with a relatively low fish stocking density. And I'm talking about less than a one pound for every 10 gallons, right? And less, right? And the reason behind that is, is that when you bring that water with high alkalinity into your system and you're feeding, your raft system is gonna be fed at a relatively low rate. So this is gonna deal with pH. So when you're feeding your fish at that relatively low rate, we know that the ammonia is produced as a byproduct. The ammonia is therefore the fuel that's gonna jumpstart your nitrification. In that nitrification process, there's acid that's produced, right? There's protons that are produced in that process. That acid is what strips out or strips the alkalinity. It destroys the alkalinity and it begins to lower the pH where we can then add our essential nutrients that are not supplied sufficiently in the fish feed and we can raise our pH back up. So what happens is when you have a relatively low feeding rate, a super low feeding rate, a lot of people like to stock super low. When you stock super low, you're only feeding enough to where it's only producing a relatively low amount of ammonia. As a, as a result, there's only so much acid that's gonna be produced from that feeding rate to compete with that high source of alkalinity in your well water. And when I'm talking about high alkalinity, I'm referring to 200 parts per million and more, right? 200 parts per million and more. So you're bringing that high alkalinity water in there, and I'm talking about as a start, the start of your system and as the top off, right? You're bringing that into your system and you're only producing a certain amount of ammonia, which only produces a certain amount of acid at, in the nitrification process to compete with that alkalinity. And as I told you guys before, alkalinity is the bodyguard for pH, right? It's the guy standing there with the hands like this. Like you can't, you gotta get past me to get to the pH. So if you can't strip at that alkalinity, you can't really drop your pH to allow you to supplement those essential nutrients that are missing, missing in the fish feed. Pay attention, right? Because this is very important. And this is dealing with authentic aquaponics. I'm not talking about just adding acid in there and doing it that way and, um, and, and fighting against the alkalinity with adding acid in there. I'm not referring to that. I'm referring to just the natural process of how aquaponics works. So when you have that high source of alkalinity and that low so uh, a low nitrification, then that alkalinity is never, you're gonna be competing and you're not gonna be able to, 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 to duel it out and to defeat that alkalinity. And therefore your pH is gonna be either stable or it's gonna increase, right? It's gonna increase. And this is particularly important in the raft system because we have this extra large body of water here. Right, so all this is, it has alkalinity in it. All of this has alkalinity in it. So you have this massive amount of water that you're trying to compete with. You're trying to strip out the alkalinity in here as well. It's not just the fish tanks. So it's different from the NFT. The NFT, we're just dealing with the, the, the pretty much the fish tank water. But this, we have pretty much 60% extra water, which is more alkalinity that we have to fight. And when you stock at that low rate, you're, it's going to be hard to, to, to combat that alkalinity. And I'm telling you that from experience. Here in this raft system here, this is stocked currently over a half pound per gallon, right? The, so that's at pretty much the, the peak at where you want to stock your aquaponic system, right? We're over the peak here on this one. And I'm pushing this one to the limit just to, just to run tests. But even with that stocking density and a high feeding rate, when the alkalinity comes in here, because my alkalinity is just around 100 parts per million, right? There's still, when I feed at a lower rate, 
when I feed at a lower rate, you can see that the pH doesn't, doesn't drop, right? It doesn't drop as drastic. And even when I'm feeding at a higher rate, to uh, the the proper ratio to match the fish that are in here the pH doesn't even doesn't drastically drop it still does its you know uh, shifts here and there 0.1 every one day or every two days or every three days and during the winter time it's even less of a drop right and that's fed at the appropriate feeding rate at a relatively high fish stocking density and we're still getting, I mean, it's dropping, but it's at a lower pace because we're fighting against this alkalinity in this water here, along with the source top off water. And it's only, you know, so much feed that's being put in, put in there to boost that nitrification, to pr produce that acid, to fight off that alkalinity. Right. So follow. I hope you're following along with this. These are some of the nooks and crannies of aquaponics. So if you have. If I only put one fourth or one tenth of the, uh, or let's say one fourth of the feeding feed in here, the pH is going to be even lower. And also in this RAV system here, you're also, the plants are also increasing the, um, the pH, the roots when they're taking up the nutrients, right? They're, 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 they're excreting compounds that are re increasing the pH in here. So when you test the pH in the raft, a lot of times it'll be higher than the rest of the system because the plants are contributing to that increase in pH. So you're battling it out in here and the lower feet, lower amount of feed that you put in there, the hot, the harder it's going to be to combat a source of water that's high in alkalinity, right? It's going to be harder to combat. Like I said, the NFT, and we'll go into this another time. I won't go on because this could be an hour long discussion, but the NFT doesn't have that large body of water to compete with. So this system here, the NFT is stocked at about half the stocking density currently as the, um, or actually, actually one fourth the stock stocking density as the, uh, the raft is right now. And the pH here does not have the same combat uh, or I don't have to duel it out as much to drop the pH. Right. And that's with the same source of alkalinity. So if you're going to be doing a raft system with a relatively low fish stocking density and you have high alkalinity coming out of your well water, then you're going to most likely run into some issues with the pH. Right. You're most likely going to run into that. Then you're going to start doing, you know, the hydroponics with the fish cover up. You're going to have to start going into that, finding out ways to drop the pH, all these other things, because it's not going to be natural and congruent with the natural process of how aquaponics is designed to work, right? So I hope you're following me on that. Now, if you do have that situation, say you do want still to run at a low fish stocking density, if that's what you want to do and you have high alkalinity, then you're probably, your best bet is to tap on that reverse osmosis filter, filter out all the carbonates that are in there that are contributing to that alkalinity, bring a fresh, pure source of water into your system, and then from there, you won't have much of a problem dropping your pH. And then when you adjust your pH, you'll be then adding alkalinity into there because you don't want to just run your system with no alkalinity because your pH is going to be flying up and down throughout the day. And that's not healthy for the fish nor the plants, right? So when you add or adjust your pH, you'll be uh, adding your, those missing elements. And then also you'll be adding alkalinity in there as well. Right. And it'll give you some type of protection on your pH. Right. It gives you a few bodyguards to protect your pH. So these are some of the circumstances where it might be necessary for you to have a reverse osmosis filter on there. And there's a few more, but I mean, we can go into it, man. I'm telling you, it's already 14 minutes for this video and we'll be running on for 30 minutes to an hour. So those are just a few of the uh, situations where I see that someone could have the potential need to need to, to uh, have or put on a reverse osmosis filter before they put that water in to their aquaponic system. Right. So I hope that helps you out and gives you something to think about. Right. And um, maybe later on, we'll bring out some more examples and more information on this. And then we'll talk more about the differences later on between the, the raft and the NFT 
and how the um, you know how the water parameters fluctuate between the two systems and how you know it's a different operating procedure for both of those we'll get into that at a later time so like I said hopefully this has helped you out and you guys out there that may be into the uh, into a certain you may be pondering the same question and maybe this is giving you something to think about so if you guys need more help out there you can go to the school of aquaponics.com or you can click on the link below to get your free starter guide and a free aquaponics course that's gonna help you out right also you can get into aquaponics paradise that's where you learn the fundamentals of aquaponics and there you can get growing right get a nice foundation to build your house on right so with that being said until next time this is Brooklyn st. Michael with the School of Aquaponics reminding you to stop walking and get you a car.